Hello, my name is John, and John is my name. Today I'm talking with my good friend and mentor of many years, John Metcalf. So John, what was your first camera? I had a brownie camera. I was all over the place. As much as I could get my hands on film, that's what I did. And luckily enough, I had grandparents that uh, provided me that with that uh, opportunity to be able to take rolls of film and just run them to the store and so on and so forth. Uh, I would do anything. There was a local photo photographer I studied with and worked with, did his dark room work, things like that. And uh, then I would carry the bag of reflector for another one uh, before uh, they uh, trusted me enough to go out and shoot on my own. I kind of chuckle because I am very shy in many ways, but when you put a camera in my hand, that all goes away. Well, don't be looking cute, okay? Don't, don't it almost has cute. to. And that was uh, an opening for me to be able to be a part of a group. Just started pushing. Uh, never knew, really knew what I was doing until people started talking to me about my work and then giving me ideas and things to push towards. Oh, I love that. They didn't tell me I was good. <laughs> they said, I hate you. <laughs> which which uh, uh, um, transfers or relates to, you must be pretty decent because I can't beat you. I don't, I don't know. I, I've never had that mentality of I'm better than somebody else or anything like that. I just like to compete. Tell me about Trophy Boy. <sighs> when I entered my first print competition at the state level, I walked in having no experience. I walked out having to use a dolly cart with all the trophies. And that's where it came from. Uh, I was embarrassed. I did not want to be seen. I, uh, I, I didn't know what to do with this feeling or all this stuff. And then it was whispered, Trophy Boy. I came to Illinois and repeated the process. And that's where it just went nuts. <laughs> Haven't heard that for a long time. I look at the bowling shirt every once in a while and go like, hell no, <laughs> and walk away. <laughs> we did a lot of print comp over the years. What did print comp mean to you? Print competition really revitalized, uh, I want to say me personally, and the, the competing factor, the excitement of going to a show and um, I always wish to have an image in a gallery, you know, being from a small town, that type of thing. And that kind of gave me that feeling. I'd see my work with other people's work. Um, I had uh, um, uh, an image, uh, send one angel. So everybody thought it was going to be an angel print. And it was a black gentleman being tied up. And he was looked like he was praying. Uh, the, uh, um, uh, a couple other, other ones, uh, um, Oh, I forget what it was called, but either either the good person was uh, waiting for the bus or they were being uh, ready to be sacrificed, and they didn't know what, what it was. Killing time. Yeah, thank you, killing time. Some of my idols in the photography world commented on it and either hated it or loved it. I put that young man through three hours of torture by his hand. He, he, he made the image. He didn't, he didn't shower. He didn't shave for three days. He, he came in. He rolled around the dirt. We were throwing rocks at him. He had real blood in the image. He had fake blood in the image. And I made him sit there and just expand and contract and expand and contract. And I lit it with uh, shop lights. You know, everything that the, the people who were used to judging had not seen. Uh, that image uh, won locals, state, mid-America, uh, and was part of a group of four images that won the uh, international print competition, uh, 2001 or something like that. 
that that was probably the strongest. Wasn't that the year of the Diamond Fuji? Yes. Do you have a favorite camera? The gear isn't important. I have um, a Sony, believe it or not, A6400. I don't. I didn't go the big fancy way. Uh, it's lighter. Uh, I, I have a bit of a medical condition, so I didn't want any more heavy gear. I picked the lightest thing I could, and I put my money in the lenses. If you're spending all your time looking through the camera, you're not connecting with whatever it is on that other side. Excellent. And uh, the reliance on the camera has become more so. So a moment ago, you mentioned a medical condition. I know you've been dealing with diabetes forever, so how does that affect your photography? I'm 50% blind in my right eye, and I've had just recently, as of last Friday, had three eye surgeries on my left over a two or three week period, or a month. Um, I have no peripheral vision, but I, my eye is sharp in the center. Um, I, my right eye was my dominant eye for 30 some odd years, almost 40 years. And I would watch with my left eye while I shot with my right. I had to change that. I now am uh, lucky enough that I have a camera with the eye sensor. Uh, I can tell that it's in focus. And uh, um, I can look at it with my left eye and then I can see my framing uh, and exposure through the Sony camera with my right, even though it's not in focus, and I can watch people with my left. It is something that I had to work really hard at to be able to shoot again, because there was for a year or two that I couldn't, I couldn't see. I had a nightmare that I had to be up on stage give a class or a presentation and not be able to see. That came true with my diabetes. I've had seven, eight eye surgeries. It's my life. What do you do? <laughs> and what's your favorite thing to photograph? Um, I absolutely love and adore photographing dancers. I love fashion. Uh, ballet has been a seven year kick for me right now. But dance, especially uh, lesser established dancers, Gorgeous. Uh, are probably my stronger suit. Um, uh, I want to be a part of their growth uh, in, in some respect. Black and white or color? Black and white. Black and white. So John, at my first convention in around 2007, I felt like I'd been adopted by you three guys, Paul Rogers, Michael Barton, and yourself. Tell me about those years and how I was so lucky to be brought into that circle. <sighs> I, I know how it happened, but I don't know how it happened. Michael liked to talk. Paul was a master. So the combination of that right there, that nucleus, all being sat at a table because we don't fit in any other groups, it allowed me to loosen up and not be so reserved or, or tight. And then meeting with them and talking about how we could advance ourselves in the competition realm uh, started to bubble. I saw someone who had more than what they were showing. And that's what attracted me. And I'm, uh, I think, I, I feel like I'm in the same place. I have more to offer than what I'm showing, and it's time that uh, I start showing it. It's all I think about. It's all, it's all I dream of. Thank you for making me cry. <laughs> well, 
The, oh, I'm so sorry about that.